Hey y'all, I just want to make a video that uh, would really answer a lot of the questions I get in comments. If you haven't seen my other videos before, this is a shed that I had built and it has a portable generator in it and uh, the generator is powering my home. And so, um, and a lot of y'all are out there doing this now, especially after the recent hurricanes here in the, the Houston, Texas area. Although, you know, you, no one's immune to these weather um, events. So uh, this video is really meant to answer not only the comments that I get or questions I get in my comments uh, that are frequent, but also kind of where I think people are after they get uh, their generator set up and they've got you know, some of these open-ended questions that either they've dealt with or they're going to have to deal with when the storm comes. And so I kind of think of this as like the top 10 what's next after you've gotten your generator. And so um, I do, uh, the number one thing I want to kind of call out and talk about is uh, bonding. And bonding is, um, you know, you may have heard this, you may have read this in the manual, but in electrical systems, there's a ground wire and there's a neutral wire. And they are bonded in one location throughout electrical systems. And so um, this generator, it comes bonded. And so what we don't want to do is feed the panel, our electrical panel, that is also bonded with an electrical power source that is bonded or with the system that is bonded. And so um, what uh, this generator specifically uh, requires is the this panel is taken off. You take off three screws and then you take off the little bonding uh, wire so super easy but read the manual this is a safety thing again you don't want two systems that are have a, a neutral and a ground bonded and so um, you know you would do this in a scenario where the, the uh, generator is only going to be feeding your panel um, and it's not going to really be doing any other things and so I'm I need to add my unbonded sticker on the front so that's something you should also do if you do unbond the generator um, and you know, it's a safety thing. So start there. I'm a lot, I'm, I know a lot of you have asked about that. Go ahead and get that done. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, what the size of, of the generator, this specific WGen uh, Westinghouse generator uh, is. It's a WGen 11500 11, uh, TFC. And they, people have asked, well, what's the size with the wheels off? And so um, from this edge to the other edge it's a little over 23 inches and so if a lot of y'all out there have these this sun cast shed and either have an existing generator or getting ready to build this out if you take the wheels off i've got mine sitting on center blocks um, with also some ac uh, absorbs absorbing pads that sit underneath it those pads are super helpful in reducing the vibration and noise from the shed and i'll put a link in uh, the description for those. Uh, highly recommend uh, adding those to your setup. If you're not running on wheels, um, it will help with uh, noise and vibration reduction. Um, the other thing I get a lot of questions about is how hot the shed gets. And so what I would say is, is if it's normal temperatures outside, let's say you know below 95, below 90, it's never been an issue. And typically stays you know in the 100 or less or so. Um, when it does become an issue is when it gets over 95 or it's 100, 105, feels like it keeps going up, you know, those hot temperatures. We had these hot temperatures after Hurricane Barrel and I had to keep the lid open or at least prop to help it breathe. Um, you know, those, I started to see temperatures inside of the shed around 119 degrees. It, will it run that way? Yes, but it's probably not the best thing. I added some muffler or exhaust uh, wrap uh, to the exhaust extension and exhaust pipe that is leaving the shed and that dropped the temperature in the shed significantly. I'd say I'd seen about a 10 degree drop. Now that's not a super scientific metric because you know I was measuring with different temperatures outside but it did significantly feel like the temperature had dropped in the shed and so I'll put a link for that in the description as well. I highly recommend doing that wear gloves, follow the instructions, you get it wet, you wrap it around the exhaust, um, and then you tie it off uh, with some clamps, and it will make a big difference. The, this is the same wrap that's used on motorcycles and other things to keep people from burning their legs. Um, so I would, I would highly recommend doing that. Um, the other thing is 
uh, with these setups. Um, it's important, you know, which we've been talking about, it's important to keep these things cool. And I think I've caused some confusion with this transfer switch in previous videos. So what this is, is it's a 110 transfer switch. It has a leg going to my electrical panel for house power, and it has a leg that goes to the generator. You can see it right here. A lot of people just plug this fan into the generator plug. The problem with that is when you turn the generator off, that fan turns off. You close this shut up, it gets really hot inside of here because the generator is still hot. You need to keep cooling that generator after the generator is turned off or after you have switched back to grid power. Either way, this makes it easy for me to make sure that this always has power. I also have my trickle charger in here for my battery. So this, this generator has a built-in trickle charger that stays plugged in and no matter what, whether it's getting power from the generator or from the, from the panel, it always has power. The other thing I wanted to talk about is spark plugs. So why are spark plugs important? A lot of people have been getting these sh uh, generators and running uh, natural gas and um, propane and right out the gate they're having problems starting them. But if you change the spark plug, I'll put a, a link in the description, these things will start right up. I had just an, a perfect example yesterday, I was helping my neighbor with this brand new Duramax and he could not get it started on propane. We changed the spark plug, boom, started right away. And I hear the same thing from other people. Um, you know, who are, are doing the same kind of setups. Um, and, you know, another question I get is, uh, speaking of natural gas, is how do I get my quick connect natural gas hose in here and close the door? Because you can tell it's kind of tight. This regulator had a bolt that was down here. Um, I took that bolt out on one side so that I could turn the regulator in. That allows me to put the hose in and close the front doors. The good thing about that, obviously, is the noise reduction, but even more important, if it's raining outside, you do not want this stuff to get wet. For many reasons, for rust, for its electrical system, you want to try to keep this thing as dry as possible. Um, so that allowed me to close the door and still use this, this shed. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is oil. Um, you know, after you get through your break in oil and you switch over uh, to your normal oil, what I would suggest, switch over to a synthetic oil, um, but don't run more than 50 hours on that oil. Um, I have a lot of people that are like, hey, you're running longer than 50 hours. No, I just, you know, mentioned that that's about the time you should be doing it. I would say do it before 50 or right at 50. Um, you know, it, it, it's not always most convenient when you're right at the end of the storm, you know the power is going to come on and you may be hitting that mark, but go ahead and do it. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is what do you need to do in order to um, prepare for the storm? And so, you know, I have a few things that I think are crucial to have in your stash. One thing would be um, spark plugs, obviously. Uh, another thing would be oil. That's probably the most important outside of having your fuel sources. In this case, I've got a couple fuel sources. I, I use both natural gas and gasoline uh, for longer storms. I run uh, gas, uh, natural gas for you know quick short outage. I may just start it up with gas. I keep stabilizer in the in the tank, and this tank holds about nine gallons of gas. And so, benefit to that is it's if if you just got a short storm, you just need to crank it up. You don't have to get the hose out. You don't have to mess with bleeding the natural gas or propane line. You just boom, start it up. Um, I recommend ethanol free gasoline and I also recommend if you're using gasoline that you drain that uh, fuel line uh, when you're getting ready to shut it down um, and what that means is is that get the load off the generator you're back on grid power let the generator run turn that fuel line off on the side let it go through the remaining gasoline that's in the system and that'll keep it help you with your maintenance long term um, you know outside of that uh, the other question I really get a, a lot is, can you run your ACs with this setup? Yes, I run both of my ACs with this setup. How do I do that? I use a soft start kit, not a hard start kit. Um, if I'm running on gasoline with this specific generator, I can start both of my ACs. 
um, I have to kind of limit other things that I'm running in the house. So what do I do? I don't limit anything and I just run one AC at a time. It also allows me to do that on natural gas as well. I can't run both ACs on natural gas. The amperage is too high. Um, but you know, that should help. Um, you know, if you're looking at doing this and you want to run your ACs, which I don't know why you wouldn't want to run your ACs, plan on getting a soft start kit. There's a few brands out there. Um, I'm going to put a couple links in the description of this video and um, you know I would say one's probably better than the other as far as supports concerned but they all kind of have their own uh, issues um, I would say generally I haven't had any issues and with the brand that I micro air brand um, that historically they have not had issues but there was a small batch of devices that went out uh, of their new model so just be aware of that, and if it's something that's been sitting on the shelf, check with the manufacturer before you have it installed um, and make sure it wasn't uh, a, a batch of uh, bad ones. So um, yeah, I just uh, want to say thanks, and please like and, li like and subscribe to the channel. Um, and then if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'm generally pretty good about getting back to them. I hope this video helps uh, y'all out there get to the next step if you're kind of in this process of building out got uh, the tropics active right now and so um, it's probably good for you all to be out there testing your generators don't test them you know the day of the storm uh, I would say get out there and test make sure your batteries are good um, you know that's a common issue and uh, yeah if you have any questions put them in the uh, comments and thanks for listening